Yes, Father Tom, I see you. Yes, Father Sunny, happy to see you. Uh, Welcome. Yes, thank you. Thank you. And all the best to you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Facebook post and uh, yeah. I'm in Ireland. All the best I'm, to in, you, yes. I'm in Ireland now. Yeah. What happened? It's time now. Exactly seven o'clock. Sister Shiji is there. Time. Good evening, good evening, good evening. I think it is time, no? Seven o'clock for you. Yes, exactly. For the, for, the, for the participants are just joining in. Can we wait fine, for a few fine, moments? Fine, 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 fine. Yeah. Good evening, Father Sunny. Good evening, good evening. Why not? Yeah, I was thinking why what happened? They are leaving and coming, no? Maybe can connect to another network, maybe. What are you telling? We have just 63 participants. Um, we need to still a few more to get in.
but the sunny will wait a few more minutes yeah, 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 yeah no problem don't worry what time is there now yeah, what's the time exactly 233 3 minutes more i mean exactly four and a half hours difference no what about your lunch siesta yes over siesta and so on we have always work now started already okay what about the quarantine that's just over that's over yesterday is over weather We are respecting over 100 participants. 70 are there, 69, 70 are there now. The 71. Some of them informed me saying that the connection problem is there. So I think in Guwahati also is a problem.
Okay, okay Father, we shall start off the program today. Please, please. A very good evening to all present here. We have come to the second day of the program. I feel extremely happy that all of you have joined in this meet. To begin with the program, I invite Sasa Kusum Vandana Topno to lead us into prayer. Sasa Kusum. Let us listen to the word of God, reading taken from the book of Proverbs, chapter 4, verses 6 and 7, and chapter 2, verses 6 and 7. Do not forsake wisdom, and she will protect you. Love her, and she will watch over you. The beginning of wisdom is this. Get wisdom, though it goes, you all have all you have, and get understanding. For the Lord gives wisdom, from his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. He stores up sound wisdom for the upright, he is a shield to those who work uprightly. O oh, Heavenly Father, guide us accordingly. Shape us and mold us into a better person. As we draw close to you, may we understand your teaching and apply them into our life. And even as we listen to your inspirations through different resource persons, Help us to see and understand the need of the hour so that we may commit ourselves in the service of others. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as yes. it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Thank you, Sisil Kusum, for leading us into prayer. Thank you so much. It is said, 
Education is not the learning of the facts, but the training of the mind to think. We are reminded again and again of the ultimate goal of education and the implications it has in the lives of children. We shall now listen to a brief message from Sister Catherine Joseph, the General Counsel for Education, before we move on to the session. May I call upon Sister Catherine Joseph. Sister Catherine. Is Sister Catherine present? Okay. I think Sister Catherine is unable to connect. So we shall move on to the next. We were given a means to have an in-depth understanding through the seminar we had yesterday, which led us to delve deep into the context we are living now. And it pointed out the importance of having a right approach to education today. Understanding its undertones and implications on the lives of individuals and on the society. It's now time for the session of this evening on the theme, Challenges of Indian Education Today. And we have here with us an eminent person as a resource person, Father Dr. Sunny Jacob, Secretary of International Jesuit Education, Ireland. He is well known for his in-depth knowledge in education today, as he is part of a leading group that plans and evaluates this mission. Some of you had the privilege of attending this program in the month of February this year at Machakolgre in Garo Hills, Mehalaya. Let me speak briefly about him for the sake of those of you who, are, who have not attended his program and who are attending it for the first time. Father Dr. Sunny Jacob SJ is currently the designated Jesuit education expert with Educate Magis at Galway Island, formerly Secretary of Jesuit Educational Association, South Asia. He is a distinguished, distinguished educationist in India and abroad. He was national advisor to the Jesuit Alumni Association of India, which is one of the largest alumni networks in India. He is a member of the International Commission for the Association of Jesuit Schools in Rome. In addition to this, I want to say that Father Sunny is a prominent education activist and a frequent writer in magazines and periodicals on issues on education. Dear Father Sunny, it gives me immense pleasure to welcome you to this day's program. I, on behalf of the entire group gathered here from various schools, thank you for availing yourselves this evening. I know there is nothing else but your passion to spread the ideals of education makes you spare your precious time with us. Thank you so much, Father, for your availability and generosity. Welcome, dear Father Sunny. Dear friends, this seminar is organized to become more aware of the challenges we face in education today and to become more open to the changes, which is in a way inevitable. Let me hope that we will have an engaging and enriching session ahead. I now welcome Father Sunny. Over to Father Sunny. Thank you, Sister Shiji, for your wonderful welcome. And uh, am I audible to you? First of all, let yes, me... Yes, Father. Okay. So it is nice to talk to you from here in this afternoon from Galway, 
Ireland. You know, I reached a, a week ago only here. I was under quarantine until yesterday. And uh, after the test, a negative test came. So I am free now onwards in my mission. And in fact, today I got into my work. So from here, it is nice to talk to you. Uh, as we uh, look at this education, yesterday I saw you had a, a talk on uh, various aspects of, uh, especially on psychological look at the education last, uh, the current situation. I'm looking at more of uh, uh, the realities of uh, around us, in fact, what is happening to us. And then I'll place you some challenges for education. Uh, you know, when we look at India, I can tell you, and I have been telling this one so several years. In fact, I remember in 2014 onwards, I am in Northeast. Many times, several times I had come. I talked to at that time for uh, the, the leading groups there, including the bishops and so on, that things are rapidly changing in this country and we need to pace it up with the changing times. Unfortunately, I think we have not made any concerted effort together to face the challenges the country is facing and also the challenges of the church. In fact, next week, 26th, I have another session for uh, one group in India. And on 29th, I'm addressing the uh, Monfort Brothers again, is organized by the Northeast there, but for all India. And, uh, and 30th also, I have another meeting for another organization in Delhi. So all these uh, are, we are talking about the challenges which we are expected of in the coming days too. To put you in perspective, let me ask you whether you are aware of the recent recommendation given by the NCPCR uh, uh, that about minorities and interfering in the minority affairs, recommending to the government to stop the minority rights and related things, especially uh, it has to be made effective in our minority schools, especially the RTE and so on. You must have heard that. In fact, I have written after coming to here, uh, I have written an article how, uh, how illogical this argument itself. Uh, just last week, I have written an article. Now, NPC, NCPCR and so on is an organization under the government of India to look after the uh, child rights, etc. They are crossing the limit and entering into the realms which we are, they are not supposed to enter it. And such legal organizations, when they give the recommendation to the government of India, government of India purposely will make legal remedies for us to control us. You know, this is what is going to happen in the coming days. So things are going to be a bit difficult for us, especially the minorities and so on, especially our schools. Having said so, Having said so, in the light of the NEP also, you, you know what is going to happen, especially through the, what we call the school complex system, etc., which we are going to be affected severely. Having said so, let me come to the realities of India. What exactly the challenges we face? Now, when we talk about the challenges of our education in India, uh, an overall picture of India must emerge in our minds. India is the largest democracy with a remarkable diversity. You know, we have uh, more than 1.3 billion, which makes up about 17% of the total population of the world. Huge number, 17%. Almost 70% of Indian population is rural. People are living in the rural area. You know, the Northeast as a whole is in a rural belt. The adult literacy rate stands at about 60 to 65 percentage, in fact. And this is significantly lower in women and minorities, especially in the minority communities, the Muslim communities, as well as the women. Education in India comprises of, you know, the different levels of education we have. Government education, private institutions, of which nearly 40 percentage are government institutions. 
with the population growth uh, uh, is about the rate of 1.5 percentage in India, there is tremendous pressure on the education system to provide a quality education at an affordable price and improve the literacy rate. You know, I am here in uh, Galway, just uh, uh, I'm in the campus of a school here. I was told that the school has uh, the higher secondary level, they have only 500 students and the primary section another 500. And this is the one of the biggest schools in Ireland. It means 1000 students means it's a very big school. So the number of people and the population is increasing and it is creating a uh, tremendous pressure on us to give affordable education, quality education at an affordable price in India. Now, when we look at the challenges, we can identify certain areas. Number one is the quality, you know. That's why I said the number in this school is very less and therefore the quality is very high and so on. It's, it's possible. Now, quality for us, it's a maintaining standard of education is as a, as a big nation, it's very, very difficult for us. Especially offering quality programs for teachers, you know. This time the NEP has come out with all this. And so I, whenever I talk, the back of my mind, the NEP reform suggestions are there. It talks about the teachers must be given proper training in service as well as uh, pre-service training must be very, very strong. And in service includes uh, several tests and programs for teachers. So we, it is a big challenge for us offering training programs to teachers. And also uh, keeping a good balance with the education system worldwide is a big challenge. You know, in, in fact, other countries are all progressing in a much, much bigger way. They are entering into artificial intelligence and so on. We are still the old model classroom teaching. We are continuing. Schools in India, if you look at state-wise and the area-wise and so on, it all vary in size and resources and are forced to compromise in all round development opportunities they must provide to students. In fact, the NEP 2020 talks about a minimum number of students in the class restricted to 30 to 35. 30 is the number actually. But you look at your own classrooms. We have 60, 70, some schools have 80 students in a classroom. So how are we going to give quality education? I think that is one of the challenges we need to look at. The socio-political challenges will come to. But just to keep this, this is a big challenge for us as educators. How to give quality, especially the NEP talks about uh, uh, multiple intelligence-based education. The uniqueness must be accepted. Child-centered education must be given. And we know that it's highly impossible when there are 60 students or 50 students in a classroom to care each child in accordance with its own qualities and talents. So that's the first point you must keep in mind. The second challenge we have is, I feel, the accessibility. You know? For example, we have infrastructural constraints in India. And the social issues are there, caste differences are there. And in the, in, the, in the northern part of India means the caste difference is very high. Each caste is having its own uh, ghettos, you know. Therefore, the intermingling doesn't take place. And in that lower caste areas, the schools will not have uh, proper infrastructural facilities. So therefore, all these situations makes it harder to make education accessible to all segments of the society, especially women, minorities, and poor. You know, the NCPCR, I was mentioning about that, you know, that recommendation. The NCPCR is recommending to Indian government is to stop all the madrasas. You know, 11,500 madrasas are, they want to close it. And they say all the minority schools should cater to the needs of these poor. And in fact, you know, it is 25 percentage, they say, we have 75 percentage we are giving in our schools. Mostly we are starting the schools itself is in the rural areas. But the government is somehow want to, want to create problems and close down many of our schools, etc. Therefore, what happened, the, the already lacking the accessibility to students, 
especially the government schools, etc. Yesterday I was reading another program here uh, about India. I see the schools now, no facilities at all. Students do not know anything. Seventh standard students do not know how to read standard one textbooks. So government schools are miserably a failure. And already existing other schools, like private schools, like minority schools, etc., they want to cut in. So in fact, in order, uh, instead of giving accessibility to more students, it's going to restrict us, restricts more children. So that is a second challenge you must keep in mind. Third is also the cost. For example, a, a government has a response if, here in, in, in Ireland and so on, in other countries in Europe and so on, the entire education is taken care of by the state. Now look at ours. The, 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 the cost of education is very high. Free education is provided at the government schools, etc. But many of them are not paying attention to improve the quality. So qualitatively, they are very poor, but free accessibility, free education, without having any, any substance in many places, barring uh, some states like Kerala and uh, like Delhi and so on, on Andhra Pradesh now. All other places are very miserably failed. So therefore, the cost affordability is a big problem. Now, with the NEP, arrival of NEP, my dear sisters and teachers, please mind you, with the arrival of the NEP, it is more of handing over to the private sections. And you look at now itself, in the reality you see, many of our children will be coming to the school without paying the fee, but they go and pay any amount in the tuition centers, you know. There are no problem. I have seen it in my school when I was principal. I have uh, closely uh, watched all those kinds of uh, stupid way of, uh, you know, the tuition they pay, no problem. But the schools, they won't pay. So uh, somehow this, this cost and affordability is a very big thing for us to look into. That's a big challenge for Indian education. Third one is, you know, no, online education, for example, you know, you know the uh, Niti Aayog has come out with a report saying that 70% of Indian students are unable to access to uh, this, uh, what are called classes. 70% of students are not getting uh, classes at all. So therefore, what happens is an education system augmented by online components presents a unique opportunity to solve a multitude of challenges in quick time at affordable budget. Here is a, for example, I'll tell you, the online classes, no, we, we very few, 30% of people only getting the accessibility. So I think that's a huge challenge. For example, uh, in our own schools also, we are unable to give it or cater to the needs of all the students. So it's a big challenge because of um, the internet accessibility is not there. And also many parents do not have gadgets. And even if there is a gadget and so on, rechargeability is not there. If at all, there is a, there's no electricity. So the problems are plenty with regards to the online classes. But can we avoid online classes? No. And therefore the government has the responsibility to provide better facilities. But I think they are failing in it. And therefore that is a big challenge for us when we look at Indian education. To improve the quality education means we need to have online aided or computer aided adaptive testing and so on very much ne necessary. We need to encourage collaboration among students, teachers, parents, alumni, activists and institutions. I think alumni, as uh, Sister Shiji mentioned about me, you know, the alumni and so on. Alumni is a big resource. Actually, we need to, uh, we need to utilize them. Encourage collaboration among all of us, various stakeholders, so that we may be able to give better facilities, improve the quality of education. A, a consistent grading system of measuring the rank of students, etc. For example, the NEP talks about you know, total reworking on the assessment system. Today, we have a very, very wrong system. We are simply worried about getting more marks and marks and marks, you know. The ICSE, CBSE system, you know, 99.9 percentage and so on and so forth. So we need to change the grading measure, I mean, the system, uh, because each one is unique. Some may be good at some uh, subjects, some studies, etc. You cannot have one size fit for all education for everybody. 
and therefore that has to and i think quite a lot it has come into the nep in fact it's a pedagogy and the curriculum format is quite good at the nep but implementation part and the governance system is wrong in that so so look at the pedagogy part and then uh, then we can face these challenges we need to look at the all round development of students you know indian system that we are giving importance to all the same manner you know one size fit for all education i call that way one size fit for all that's not the education system we are looking for each child is different but that is not taken into consideration even in our schools christian schools also okay we need to promote alternative education ideas today because education is not only in the classroom students can learn much much better way much much bigger Sister way Shri much you can hear you cannot hear one minute can you hear me yeah can hear yes father. can hear father we can hear maybe some problem with yes. the Yes, yeah. Father, yes. Yeah. In yeah. case, you know, in case there is uh, any difficulty, please let me know like this, uh, because uh, I, okay, I hear. I I think my speaker is on. I can see it is not muted. It is okay. Suki Father, very clear. Okay. So, sisters, this is what uh, the students and the teachers also. We need to look into each one's uniqueness. That is another area we need to pay attention to, and that 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 does not come in a big way in Indian education as it is today, and that is why the NEP again. I am just quoting that one. NEP talks about the sixth point of the key principles is that accepting the uniqueness of each individual. That means multiple intelligence based education must be given. Multiple intelligence means each one is capable. You know, Howard Gardner, the famous uh, thinker, he says. educational psychologist he will say nobody is useless perhaps used less you know so that kind of a thinking has to emerge and i, I think the to hear for that everybody who is that yes father we can hear that's what that her speaker is a problem you are we need to try out <laughs> and i think your speaker is a problematic because i see i am i am seeing my screen here i can see it is it is not it's, muted it's clear for it's individual problem yeah individual problem please make sure that you you don't uh, try to get it uh. shri ji only say if you cannot hear then that means you are the what you call uh, you are oh, the host isn't it so yes, you will know you will know whether i am speaking or not okay so let me continue the rhythm otherwise now i will miss it so so the problem is we need to look into this individual way of educating each one is capable and therefore that has to be but i think that is not coming into our education system we'll come to the discussion or uh, 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 when when you ask me for more clarity i'll explain and i'm sure that interactive session will be there you can ask plenty of questions about education which i am talking which i am not talking also you can ask me okay no another improve another area is we need to improve the accessibility i told you for example online and open information portal accessible at any time it should be accessible for example today uh, with this corona two years we have been suffering yesterday i must have read one of the news in the hindu newspaper i think it has come out that two years we have lost you look at our children in your own schools those who joined the kg class or standard one has not seen their teachers they have not seen their uh, school and look at the, the the standards where you start laboratories you no know, lab experiences etc students have not gone through any lab experience so it is simply affecting our children so you need to create more and more opportunity for children to get access to these in the coming days and uh, overall without the without this corona also we had this difficulty many of the schools do not have proper laboratories and so on and uh, proper resources and as a solution you know government of india is bringing school complex system but in fact it is a double edged sword you know school complex system is to also to curtail the freedom of india especially the schools run by us and so on 
Anyway, so we need to give uh, this accessibility for students wherever they want and whenever they want. And therefore, provide classes, online classes and offline classes, etc., to get to this, these facilities for children. Now, look at this one. As I said, you know, cost of education, I told you, it's a very big issue. We need to reduce the cost of education. How do you reduce that one? Government must intervene. But uh, you see, the, the Indian government, the total GDP is supposed to be suggested by all the commissions from Radhakrishnan Commission to Mudaliyar Commission to Kothari Commission to um, RTE and later on this, uh, all the commission, including our Kasturi Rangan Commission has suggested at least 6% of GDP must be given for education. And no government during the past 75 years of independence have not given that much of money. In fact, if you look at from 2014, after Modi ji came to power, you see a reduction of money for education. It has simply come down from 4.7 to 3.5 to 2.7 right now. So how are we going to give a better education to all? Unless the government puts more money and give more facilities. Government is saying yes, uh, that the socially and economically deprived classes will get better facilities through scholarship and so on. But that is not a measure uh, to, to, to cater to the needs of pan-India. So that is one area. The reduction of cost means government must put more money and government must help uh, the other education players like us also, giving them aid and so on. Okay. So this is another area which uh, we can uh, uh, look into and discuss. Socially, for example, look at this. You know? Socially, there are severe problems. First of all, the social problem, India's social problem is a huge divide between haves and have-nots. And also a huge division among, uh, among the different castes, you know. This is existing everywhere. You know that uh, government schools, where poor people study, and especially the caste, caste groups and so on, no? there's a huge gradation in many places, many states. So that is one of the areas. Now, online system actually is a help for students to overcome that problem because all online classes can be accessible to any time and anywhere. But that is not reaching to the people, especially the poor people. So it's a platform, as, online as a platform is very useful, but it's not reaching. Second, we need to, for example, look at now uh, vocational courses. We said that standard six onwards, we will have vocational courses, etc. We need to enable our children to stand on. I see here in this school where I am here right now, within a week I have studied the system here. There is one corner of the land is agricultural land is given, the school, school campus. And students and teachers do research there, agricultural, farming, etc. And they study about what kind of a soil is good, what type of a, uh, the, the cultivational method is useful for them and so on and so forth. At least in the agriculture level, they are doing it. We need to have more and more such courses in the part of our schools. I think that is one area we need to look into. And Christian schools should be a model for this because many of our schools have plenty of land. We have uh, uh, everything infrastructurally. I think we need to concentrate on such innovative ways of educating our children. Uh, to overcome the social disharmony, social difficulties, and so on. Bring culturally diverse India into a common learning platform, which is offered in all languages. NEP talks about this, that, and so on, the language uh, policy, etc. But we need to bring that you know, uh, diverse India into a common learning platform. NEP is an attempt towards that, in fact, but not succeeding. Uh, in implementation of it. Now look at, uh, uh, we need to have uh, another area of, you know, must understand the 21st century children and 21st century teachers. What are the challenges you face today? One of the things we need to look into is 
we need to teach life skills you know we call it the soft skills yesterday must have father must have taught also that uh, must have talked about that 21st century we need to have life skills you cannot be isolated we cannot teach us teachers no sage on the stage method that's all about we need to teach them soft skills how to deal with socially how to deal with people how to take leadership roles and so on and so forth and therefore the subjects and the discipline should not be separate separate subjects and discipline should not be separate what do i mean by that subjects means math science whatever we are teaching that subjects disciplines means for example sports arts music and leadership skills and so on and so forth all these have to be part and parcel of our education enabling to, to a child to be self esteemed is actually uh, important in educational sector therefore life skills must be taught we need to have you uh, know uh, don't go for long and so uh, what you call detailed way of teaching in the classrooms for example the nep talks about uh, teaching core concepts not simply large teaching you know like a huge uh, syllabus and so on more of interactive core subjects must be taught in the, in the in the school children must know what exactly mean by this this particular lesson and let them reflect let them based on their own experience learn there are five elements in learning you know five elements in learning first one is the child must understand their context child must understand their context and every context gives them an experience and every experience must lead them to reflection and every reflection must lead them to action and every action must lead them to an evaluation this is where education is uh, accomplished but we what do we do we do, do the subjects we teach and we tell them to learn and then they, 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 they reproduce and therefore what happens is children are unable to understand what they are learning therefore core subjects must be taught and another thing is learning and thinking skills must go together you know very many of us what we have learned we forgot we don't know what we have learned earlier look at the teachers he asked them how they remember anything what they learned in the school because there is no thinking reflection was not going on along with what we are learning and i think the 21st century is asking us that learning and thinking skills especially critical thinking especially critical thinking must be going on and when you have critical thinking only creativity comes in because you will have why this way why not this way like that you will ask so 21st century skills me includes critical thinking and also uh, information and technology you know what do we call ict and so on earlier we used to talk this must be given technio technology based education must be part of the 21st century and this is a big challenge for teachers you know why because students are experts in gadgets you look at sincerely yourself you ask in the northeast how many of the teachers and sisters here ask yourself am i an expert in uh, uh, using the gadgets the digitalized world are we experts but you look at the students students will be experts and therefore it's a huge challenge challenge is updating ourselves to catch to 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 catch up with the world we are living in and therefore my dear teachers it's a big challenge for us and we need to face that challenge now you as a teacher the biggest challenge which we face the, the in, in indian education system the challenge we face is this one you as a teacher you as a resource provider you are not giving the answers to everyone but you have to give the students to find answers where various platform must be given that's a method of teaching today and you are also an instructional specialist you need to teach the children in better way where they can understand you need also to be a curriculum specialist 
what is you see the curriculum government is giving from there you must exactly um, take it exactly what is useful for the students you need to support the students according to its his own what we call a talents and giftedness and we need to have we need to provide such an atmosphere for the child to learn learning facilitator you are supposed to be and the, today you know today they say today's children are intellectually superior and emotionally in uh, what do we call immature today's children are intellectually superior but emotionally mature and therefore my dear teachers you have the duty to be a mentor to each student mentoring means a company walking along with the students and correcting modifying and refining the student that is called a mentor and also you are supposed to be a leader a leader is the one who walks the way no therefore the students must automatically model you and that's a big challenge today what is happening in our schools teachers come they only look for how to teach whatever the syllabus covering the syllabus covering the syllabus <laughs> nobody is uncovering the syllabus covering the syllabus is important for them and the teachers what do they do they they give the answers to the students and somehow they, they in a hurriedly they will complete and they don't know what to do and that's why the students are not getting that critical thinking and so on and therefore you are supposed to be 21st century teacher is supposed to be a school leader keep that in mind and you see every teacher must be an inspiring person inspiring person and therefore you are a catalyst for change you know the society today we are seeing you know yesterday i have written i think uh, uh, yeah one video i prepared here looking at the afghanistan situation you look at afghanistan including two jesuits are caught up there four mother teresa sisters are caught up there but it's a huge problem there in in afghanistan you know terrible there so in that situation i was looking at and i said what went wrong and i can only see that education failed miserably in afghanistan whatever reason is whoever is a provider we failed we failed in educating people to live in harmony to live in love to live as as considering the other as an ex extension of the other education failed miserably and therefore once education fails it is bound to make the nation fail and the the world fail and afghanistan whatever be the political measures will not help them unless in a in a concerted effort has to come to create that atmosphere in our school so that the current children will be the future citizens i think we miserably failed and taking the cue clue from afghanistan i am telling you india is also failing we are also faced uh, at a huge problem in the coming days maybe two years maybe four years you will see problems coping up here because education is failing and therefore i think uh, when we look at education we need to uh, really catalyst for change we every teacher sitting here you must remember that you must be a social reformer so that you can change the children change the nation and also with humility every teacher must be a learner you know because learner means we need to update ourselves you cannot teach what you taught 20 years ago now 21st century children are very fast changing students their thinking is very fast so we need to catch up with so that will be another change another challenge for us it is very important point i can make for you to think before i uh, stop and then give a little break for you to ask questions then i'll come to the next important point so this one uh, is for example every teacher in india must be 
effective in communication skills. And I think uh, we need to concentrate, especially the children, sisters, your schools, our schools, the Christian schools must cater to this need. Teachers must be effective communicators. And so also students must be effective communicators. How do you make them? Earlier our schools were good. And somehow we also lost on the way that, that effectiveness of communication, creating that competency in the children, not competition, competency among our children, we missed it. Because we are also casual, student teachers speak anything what they want at the, in, the, in the school campus. Earlier on some very strict atmosphere was like that. We need, we could have created an atmosphere early. Today it's very difficult. So, but still concentrate on this effective communication, whatever you are communicating, let it uh, communicate effectively. That's a, a 21st century students must be taught. Second, learning and innovation skills, not the time test, I mean, what you call uh, old models. We need to create uh, uh, innovative skills. I'll, I'll give you one example. You look at this, uh, the, we are all talking about the vaccine, no? Vaccine, what do we call a um, COVID shield vaccine. Uh, when I came to this side in Europe, in the airport, no? In the visa also they asked and the airport also asked, which vaccine have you taken? I said COVID shield. Okay, COVID shield is accepted. You know why? Because COVID shield is tested in Oxford University. India is only producing that. It is also actually uh, made it in Oxford University through the research. Now you look at how many of Indian universities are doing research. That is the higher level I'm talking. Now look at our schools. What creativity, what research orientedness we are giving to our children. Even in a smaller level, are we asking our children to find out uh, and do some sorts of research on a particular issue? Very, very poor in this matter, we are all. And therefore, we need to create that innovation skill, a research skill, etc. in our schools. Another important thing is, third point is, for example, technology cannot be ignored today. Media and technology skills. Media skills means their father Tom and so on is there. They know media means you need to give media education. Media education means you have to sift what is good and what is bad. Sifting is important. What is correct? What is wrong? For example, the media education includes who runs the media? For what purpose? You know, how the corporates and the media is actually, uh, there is a toxic relationship. How media projects a particular issue? That kind of an analysis has to be given. In fact, you know, my dear uh, teachers and uh, sisters, Father Stan Swami, who died in the jail, you know, he was actually giving the people this correct analysis. Correct analysis. And that's so many turn against him. Because the corporate world, the politicians, the powerful class will be always against him. But we need to give our children this correct analysis. I think that area also we are missing. Technology also. Technology, you look at how world is changing. I sometimes I amusedly amuse at, you know, two years ago, we told the students, do not bring mobile, do not use. You know? We told them, do not bring mobile in the classroom. Today you look at. Today we say, without a mobile, don't come. You know? So the whole world is changing so fast. You know, as Arundhati Roy says, you know, the only certain things that is uncertainty today. We don't know what is going to happen tomorrow. And the Corona, in fact, taught us so many things. Huh? Coronavirus has taught us so many things. One of them is this, that uh, we need to catch up with the technology, the modern world. Corona also is playing like an X-ray for us. Even, even us, you know, we need to look at many things. Quarantine, uh, sorry, corona has taught us that many things we held on is wrong. We need to change. For example, the, the, uh, the mighty powers, you know, the weapons we have gathered, atom bombs or whatever, the nuclear bombs, the latest and so on. 
lethal weapons. The countries are accumulating. All these are useless in front of an invisible virus. It is telling us like that. So we need to change also the ways and means of our functioning. Taking the clue from this kinds of uh, corona and so on, we need to change. We need to use technology. All the teachers must be, you know, suddenly 2020, March 24th night, Pradhan Mandri Narendra Modi came on TV and said, Aap jaha ho, vaha raho. You know, lockdown started. Until then, our teachers were not capable of technology education, technology-based education. But that day, we are forced to enter into. And suddenly, after that, you see, you have started swimming into technology world through mobile classes. And wherever you go to the schools and so on, it's nice to see how teachers are taking the classes, keeping a mobile like this and taking, <laughs> talking to the children in a virtual world. You know? So, that classroom Talk, talk, board method is changed into suddenly. So as a result, I'm telling you, we need to get into the technology, media, information world. So that is another area of challenge for us. Now, fourth point about the challenge is we need to look at life and career skills. World is changing quite fast. We need to cope up with this world in a very, very progressive way. And therefore, along with this communication skills, we need to have life and career skills. What are the life and career skills? I think this is where the flexibility and adaptability must be there. Flexibility and adaptability. Look at myself now. I just came from India. I was doing there all the works. Suddenly, I was place to this place, I should be flexible to learn. I should also flexible and adaptable to the situation here. Whatever the demands comes from there, I have to learn to adapt. So that is because we are in a globalized world. Everything is changing. We are today here, tomorrow there. The second point about the life skill is leadership and responsibility. I think this is a huge challenge we are faced. Leadership and responsibility is very miserably we are failing in every level. That is what we are seeing in the society. You see, there is a chaos everywhere is because of this. And the third point is initiative and self-direction must come from us. In a situation when it arises, accordingly, we need to take initiatives. And self-direction must be there. Not that waiting for that group to do or that politician to direct and so on. And finally, protectivity and accountability must be there. Protectivity and accountability. I think that the 21st century teachers, these are the challenges you are faced with. And finally, what about the 21st century students? You know, as I told you, students are intellectually superior, but emotionally immature, I told one word. Huh? But what are the 21st century students? How do we cope up with them? For example, we are not just acquiring information. They are not simply acquiring information. They need to analyze, they need to synthesize, and they need to apply what to learn to address new needs, design solutions, collaborate effectively. Uh, it all requires a new set of experiences. The students are not like earlier. They are looking for something new all the time. And therefore, the teachers must be capable of providing that, satisfying that. I think in India, uh, a lot of problems are there. That is why the government of India, especially through the new education policy, comes out with the proper training for teachers. In fact, if you look at this chapter 7, uh, uh, sorry, the NEP as a whole, if you look at, they are concentrating more on teachers. Teachers training, chapter 5, for example. Teachers training must be very much stressed. They have to go through this, uh, uh, what you call, uh, TET exams. They need to go for 50 hours of online training programs. 
and uh, continuous professional development course they call they also say that uh, np in what do you call it? Uh, national professional standard testing npst must be done for the teachers etc why because it back of its mind the commission says the students are changing therefore teachers must be made aware of these changes so that they can cater to the needs of the students my dear teachers they they like to be students now for example they like choices they can't give only one way they need multiple choices so that is another challenge for you children are group oriented and social therefore we need to allow them uh, to to work in groups they like in team works we need to encourage that aspect then only otherwise what happen more and more more and more seclusive rather than inclusive people so children are very capable of digital technology we need to focus on that one i already told you we children think differently allow them to think differently you need to have an attitude of agree to disagree differences of opinions may come in the classes let them discuss let them share even if an opposing view let them express it that kind of a thinking has to happen and uh, today children are ready to take more risks are we allow them are we able to allow them challenge they today's children value time very much so we need to give them a very very uh, engaging activities in our classrooms so my dear teachers if so i'm just coming to a very important point for you there are some kind of changes we need to uh, bring out understanding the challenges of indian education you know pope francis says pope francis says what kind of a world do we want to leave for those who come after us that means our generation next generation what type of a world we want to give them to children who are now growing up the question not only concerns the environment in isolation the issue cannot be approached piecemeal therefore an overall understanding of the society i told you the context must be very very important and what are the context we are living in remember this everything is connected everything is connected today what is the problem we are broken we are broken at various levels in the name of religion class ethnicity language countries the root of the problem that we commonly face together is disunity according to pope francis we are a lot of disunity we are not uni unity shown we are disunity the earth cries out when man breaks his connection with god neighbor and creation he eventually does injury and harm keep this in mind we have a three fold relationship all of us know i am sure that all of you know. we need to have a, a relationship with the almighty the god we need to have relationship with one another and with nature and therefore we need Uh, the awareness of our responsibility to take care of the earth for example so now looking at that one it is better now i am coming to the point as as i just told about the education so far like this this is what we need to do in the 21st century and what are the problems in the in the in the peace meal in, in the peripheral level i told you this are but actually what is happening socio political cultural context of today is india a few points 10 points for you to remember i'll tell you 10 points for example number 1 is global terrorism global terrorism you you you, you see with the emergence of this afghan again this taliban you know what we call you may see a new mode of global terrorism emerging but terrorism is a reality everywhere 
Hello? Somebody is somebody is making noise there. Could you switch off that? Yeah. So global terrorism is a reality. You cannot deny that. So when we talk about the, the issue in education, we cannot simply avoid this aspect. You know what is happening right now? I, I, I was watching from here what is happening in Shillong. What is happening in Mekhale? You know, somebody is playing seriously there and even the, 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 the home minister doesn't know what is happening there. He resigned. And I used to follow Patricia Mukim. Her writings every day I read, whatever she writes. And I, I, I see something is seriously wrong there. And this is a situation all over the world, my dear teachers. Pay attention to this. And therefore, a kind of global terrorism and unrest, a disunity, as Pope Francis says, he is coming up. Look at another area of migration. I can uh, I can show you, I don't know whether, um, Shiji, can you make me a, a co-host here so that I can present the thing? Yes, sir, I can do it. If, if you can make me, I will be happy. So that I looked at it, it was not there. That's why I'm difficult. Shall I share the screen? Sorry, let me try. Let me try. Yes, but I can share the screen. Is it there? Yes, yes, it is there. It's there. It, uh, once again, I am putting the uh, what do you call a slide mode. Let me see whether it is there. Is it there? Yes, uh, yes it is what there. Do you, just read one sentence. What is written? Migration. Can you see? Migration. Okay. Migration. Okay. Now one more, one more, right before I move. Can you tell me whether it's moving? Yes, it's yes. moving. What is there now? Population growth, global warming, clean air. No, 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 no. Okay, okay. You only read the top of that now. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. I got it. Now you look at another area area. So that means I am coming back. Eh? Migration. <laughs> Migration is an issue. You saw last year in India. And globally, we know what is happening. Now there are articles coming. I saw WhatsApp, uh, many messages are coming that in the coming days due to Afghanistan, also there will be a lot of migration. Migration can be internal migration and external migration. And Father Tom and so on party, I know the Northeast, they have uh, been dealing with this issue. A lot of migration is happening. This you cannot ignore when you talk about education. Environmental <laughs> concerns, serious concerns, environmental concerns. You know, everywhere, it's a reality. Now they are saying that the colder areas are all gone. Now it is going to be warm. And warmer areas are going to be cold, colder, uh, colder and so on. The whole thing is uh, changing, topsy-turvy actually. So when we talk about education, this issue must be back of your mind. Religious fanaticism. Is it not a reality? It's a reality everywhere. Look at what is happening in Afghanistan. Again, I'm by, just referring that. Afghanistan is, is a best example, no? And the, somebody says that this is not far away from India also in the coming days. Too much of fanaticism. What is fanaticism or fundamentalism? What is fanaticism or fundamentalism? It is Nothing but says that one's own religion is the only one or one's own culture is the only one. Religious fanaticism means my religion is the only religion. Other religions are not accepted. This kind of thinking is coming up. Majoritarianism and minoritarianism. And you know, I don't want to explicitly mention what is happening in India. In fact, Northeast, what is all you are all faced mm. with today is also part of this larger agenda. Yes, larger agenda. So mm -hmm. religious fanaticism is a reality. Look at this. Uh, this one, I think the screen is moving and you can see this. Poverty and un unemployment. Can you see that, Shiji, sister? Yes, father. Can see. Yeah. Poverty. Poverty and unemployment. You see what is happening in India today. Even after 75 years we have not to come to an end to this poverty. Unemployment is increasing. 
And you look at, if you analyze the speech of Prime Minister Modi on August 15th, you know, this August 15th, a week ago, in his speech, he was concentrating more on the partition, what you call that uh, 14th of uh, some, some days they are celebrating, you know, I forgot the name. Hmm? Part, Vibhajan ke samay ke yaad, na? what you call the remembering the partition day, bloodshed. So he talked about that so too much, too much. Again, again, rubbing salt on the people's remembrance and against hatred is created. Poverty and unemployment and so on is not coming into the picture, a bigger frame of uh, governments and so on. This is the reality we faced with. Look at another issue. Violence against women and children. All this, I said earlier in the light of Afghanistan, I told you, education miserably failed. That is why today what they are faced with. I think if we miss it, these aspects, the coming days will be difficult for us also. Violence against women and children, terrible. I need not to bring the data, you know, I have the data. So much is happening, especially in this pandemic period, lockdown period. We are facing it more. They say the other day I saw in the one report before I left India, I saw one report saying that uh, in India, domestic violence is increasing nowadays. And children, child abuse is in the highest level today. So this is a reality. We have corruption now. At every level you look at corruption. People all promise that to be corruption-free governments and so on. But the reality, we have not removed it. In fact, it is increasing. Now, what is the difference between earlier corrupt governments and present government? Is that earlier corruption was at all levels, everywhere, everybody is corrupt. Today, a few people are so corrupt that others do not have the opportunity to be corrupt. Few people are taking everything whether it's a few industrial groups and so on, you know the names. Terrible it is. So this is a level in India. A lot of scientific and technological development is happening, as I said earlier. So much is happening. But as a result, the division also is happening because majority of our people are deprived of the scientific and technological development in India. It's, it has a huge repercussions. We can discuss about that. Now, what are the values of the world today? What are the values of the world in this situation? When we look at today's world, you look at world, everybody wants money. It's a challenge when we look at education. You cannot forget all this. People all want money. You look at the subject which is to parents choose for their children. All want science, science, science. So this is the level we are moving up. Money is everything. Because it can, these subjects can earn more money, enter into better colleges and better opportunities, go for that. Money is everything. Everybody wants, this is a value, you know, everybody wants honor and glory. But on the process, we put down many people without having any honor, any glory. We segregate people. We keep them as untouchables and so on and so forth. You know, yesterday or day before yesterday, you know, I saw in uh, the Google News, one former DGP of one state, in Uttar Pradesh, I think, he says that uh, anybody who, uh, what to call, fight against or says against anything against the Brahmins and so on will suffer and so on. So this is the way people keep up that prestige. You know? People all want a glamorous life. This is another area. Education must understand this. So much of Glamorous life everybody wants. Okay. Look at this. Another area. What happened to this? Ah. Social status. That's why all the divisions and so on. Cutthroat competition. When we talk about the challenges of education, we cannot forget. You know, when I talked about the corruption, no? you must have traveled to North India and so on. And many places in India, you have seen by traveling by train and so on, many houses which are not completed. Bricks are standing just like that. Inside, they may be 
plastered and so on. But outside they have to plaster. You ask them why they do the houses like that. Unlike South India. South India and so on, if you go, houses are well complete. But in North, they won't do many places. Why? The, I, I asked out of curiosity to somebody. Then they said, it is because if you complete only, you have to pay the tax. So if you leave some parts of this, you know, without plaster and so on, you are not completed the house. So you need not to pay the tax. You know, how corrupt mindset we have and we blame others. They are corrupt. They are corrupt. The whole system is corrupt. And therefore, cut out competition. Somehow I want to win. I will put you down and go ahead. This is the situation. Everybody wants to be successful, not, effi not effective, not efficacy. Everybody wants to be successful, successful. This is the world we are living in. Another value is hedonism. Hedonism means what you call pleasure seeking. That's why people go for drugs. You know, Northeast, you know, people go for drugs and uh, alcohol and sex and so on is because of their hedonism. It's a value in the world. Pleasure seeking. Wherever you can achieve pressure, go, pleasure, go ahead with that. That's what people think. Another area is a lot of mediocrity. Mediocrity, my dear teachers, mediocrity. We don't want to do best, you know, our best. You know, there is a there's a cartoon I saw once, you know, a cartoon. It says a father unties the lace of the shoe of his child. And he's untying, he says, Son, I cannot give you the best in the world. And in his mind, that Adidas shoe, no? Adidas shoe. He says, Son, I cannot give you the best in the world. But what I can give you is my best. You know, very few people think that way. C giving our best with a passion. We don't give. We do minimum and we are satisfied with that. I think that has to change. We need to look at, you know, against this, using human beings as commodities today. We can buy, we can sell, we can traffic. I saw that uh, Father Tom's one group, you know, they are all Northeastern group is working against human trafficking. You know, what is actually the problem? The problem is we consider human beings as commodities. And education is actually creating that. You know, in fact, education itself is used as a commodity. So that is one area you need to aware of this. Again, let's come back to the last point before I give you time. You know, this is another area. A lot of greed, you know. Greed is created. A lot of greed. Greed means, you know, yesterday I saw the, uh, the, the, the interview with the Karan Thapar and uh, uh, that famous uh, person, Avish Mishra or something, or Shukla or something, he has written a book, you know, The Wasted Years in India. Year, in India's Wasted Years. That's a book. He says, a lot of greed is created today in our society, especially in this current uh, setup. A lot of greed. Everybody is looking for. So, my dear teachers, here comes the educational responsibility. This is the challenge for us. When we look at India's educational challenges, we can simply say a lot of politics, this and that. But look at what are the challenges, the context I told you, the value of the world I told you. Now coming to the challenges of this. How do you teach your children a world affirming children? Accepting the world with it all its goodness and, and correcting the wrongs. How do you give the total growth of each individual? I told you in the beginning itself that we are not catering to the needs of the children. A child-centered education, a cure of personalities we are not teaching. We are simply teaching one size fit for all. And therefore, overall growth of the child is not been taken care of. We need to look at the religious dimension. No? Today, the religion, including all of us, I'm telling you, all the schools and so on, we must know. We cannot be simply one type of religious schools. No? We need to look at the person, human persons with dignity. That is what all the religions are teaching us. And therefore, we cannot have compartmentalized way of teaching. 
and i think educationalist like you must think seriously about that matter another thing we need to have promotion of dialogue between faith and culture you know in india whether you like it or not we are living in a diverse society diversity is a hallmark of india diversity of religion diversity of culture diversity of ethnicity diversity of food habits uh, diversity of language diversity of even uh, figure you know diversity is a reality so you need to have dialogue between faith and culture i think our education must look into this another area is as i told you individual care must be given to children now how do you give when 60 children 70 children as i told you that is the anomaly that is the difficulty but the challenge is to give pure personalities care of each individual that's another area we we must discuss and today we need to teach our children a lifelong openness to growth lifelong openness not simply in the school alone a little bit of teaching and afterwards a closed up mentality you know our education is making us maybe a professional and so on but we are not making us human beings that is why the hatred that's why the division so called educated people are the ones creating more of hurdles no more of hatred the divisions very very sad it is so therefore in our education and in indian education a lifelong openness to growth must be given accepting the other is very very important we need to also teach value oriented stewardship value oriented stewardship means as pope francis in his laudato si you know that book you must have heard about no in in that book he says we are all stewards here in other words i can tell we look at the web of life we talk about every animal every insect everything has a role to play and we human beings are only one among them that attitude has to be taught that's called a stewardship we are here to take care of this because we are little more intelligently better therefore we are stewards not as dominators not as exploiters therefore that point has to be created another important about education is encourages a realistic knowledge of love and self acceptance we you know the most misunderstood word today in the world is love if i ask uh, you know in our classroom students you know do you love in the if, if i ask on the 9th class 10th class and so on they will say, the girls will laugh at me do you love difficult to say because our understanding of love is completely completely narrowed to one that is uh, about carnal love to physical love we are not thinking about a selfless love so therefore a realistic knowledge love and that self acceptance must be taught to the children and look at this preparation for an active life commitment must be there when i am i am i grow up i should be committed to the society that in jesuits we say in jesuits we say in our education creating men and women for others creating men and women for others otherwise i say five c's must be part of our education any education in india number one is you need to teach your children persons of conscience persons of conscience no conscience means much deeper i am aware of the things that is happening and i will respond to it positively proactively number 2 competency competence whatever i do i will do with maximum passion you know passionately number 3 compassion whatever i do i should feel with the person okay number 4 i should have proper commitment i am not making anything for today i am making for others for tomorrow for, for my generation and number 5 is educate the children to be persons of character so these are the five c's conscience competence compassion commitment and character these five c's are the hallmark of education it should be 
and therefore this is what i say men and women for and with others we need to see that's why we saw during these calamities during these difficulties we see many people come forward and help you know i think that has to be created and finally a good steward means it has a particular concern for the poor people who suffer people who are in difficulty people who are marginalized must be our focus and uh, let's come back to this therefore i put up for 10 points for you to change as educationist i call it as a paradigm shift in the current situation the challenge is this what is the challenge number one all of us all of you are sitting there sisters educational secretary of the general aid and so on all of you must move from management to a movement this is i propose this one this change this is called a paradigm shift for me management to a movement you know managing is easy anybody can do sit on the chair and say command you do this you do this but being part of the movement is difficult being part of the movements means you need to have flexibility you need to have readiness to accept the other so therefore you need to have a, 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 a part of this a part of the movement next one you need not to worry about success in your life all the time success 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 be effective be fruitful be efficaciousness that is more important you may not succeed you may not be the number one but you may be very very effective on whatever you do don't compare with other people and don't compete with the people simply like that you compete with yourself and maximize your potency and that's what we are supposed to do another partnership time saying is all of us teachers all of educational people move from self centeredness to other centeredness yesterday father must have told you we are all so selfish today move from that one the other centered as is a must we need to focus on the other they are also capable they also have a life they also have to grow we need to think that way. you know best example is you saw this olympics no recent olympics in tokyo you saw that one qatar one one jumper long jumper and also one from italy both of them jumped 37 meters or so 37 i think uh, or feet or i don't know how much it's the distance is same all the time they jump the same or huh? and uh, final jump no both of them 37 37 37 37 37 37 37 fourth time the, the the person who from who is from italy got injured his leg he could not jump he could not jump that means the fourth the qatar person a muslim he should have been a winner he should have been the first if he jumps but then he went and asked the authorities suppose if i don't jump will you share the gold medal for both of us because he also jumped the same i also jumped the same now he could not jump because he is he has fractured so the authorities sat together and then finally they decided yes both of we have to give gold to both then the qatar person says yes then i am not going to jump let him give let him also get the gold you know that is called other centeredness how many of us are teaching that kind of other centeredness in our schools or are we say self centered self centered you know in there is a place called kota in rajasthan kota in one of the tuition centers there coaching centers there the teachers teach this way you know i was told like this that uh, suppose one teacher is telling the students huh? suppose one students disturb you while you study in turn you must disturb 10 people you know this is the value self centeredness we are supposed to here to teach self other centeredness you no know, self centeredness to other centeredness if you do that one i think our education will be better next one you know many of us are good at administration many of the teachers also are very good at administration but we are very poor at animation so therefore i propose a paradigm shift from 
administration to animation. Move from administration to animation. Administration, anybody can do. Any Dick and Harry can do. Sit there and do. But animation is difficult. Animation means walk along with the people. Accept their weaknesses, their, uh, what you call, uh, limitations. Encourage them. Stand with them. Walk with them. Accompany them. I think that is what we need to do in our schools. And that's what the Indian, Indian education must do. You know, many of us are always thinking about I, me, myself. I do this. It is mine. And myself is the one and so on. Change that one to I, me, myself to we. I think in the education sector, all of us teachers think this way. The whole country will change. You know, that self-centeredness will change into a teamwork. You know, we need to work as a team. Nothing can be achieved by oneself. We can achieve as being part of the larger group. We are all interdependent, not independent. None of us is independent. We are all interdependent. I need you, you need me. That kind of a concept must be created among the children. Another one is, don't worry about too much of performance. You are a performer. You are doing this. You are doing that. Don't worry. Are you a seeker? Are you learning from this? When you do this one, are you learning something? So we need to change a paradigm shift from performer to a seeker. I think that is important for us. And uh, another one is we move from conventional thinking to critical thinking. Today, very little critical thinking is happening. Somebody says something, everybody follows that. That is not uh, critical thinking. Critical thinking means you must analyze, you must question, you must discuss, you must verify and believe. And that needs a lot of, lot of uh, skills, you know. And therefore, conventional thinking to critical thinking is that which I am proposing. Another area is, I'll say, from knowledge to wisdom. You know, many of our teachers are a lot, lot of knowledgeable people. They have a lot of knowledge, but they don't have wisdom. What we need is knowledge to wisdom, a move from knowledge to wisdom. I think teachers must be uh, focusing on that. Therefore, we must ask ourselves this question. Are we ready and prepared to have all these changes? As I said, in the context of India today, in the context of world today, I am placing India. We have seen so many difficulties in the context. Terrorism, you know, corruption, we saw. The, the technological changes, we saw. The environmental problems, we saw. We have seen the migration. So corruption, everything is happening. In that context, we saw the values of the people also. This is what the people are looking for. And actually, what the real values we are supposed to give in the 21st century, I explained to you. And then I am suggesting this paradigm shift in order to make our education sector better. Now, I have not gone into the NEP and NEP structural changes, which is proposed, which I have dealt earlier when I came to that school and so on. If you have any questions with regards to the changes or with regards to the difficulties also, if you want, I have not gone to any administration difficulties and so on. If you have any questions or clarifications or interaction, you are most welcome to do it. And we will all together learn this opportunity. You got it organized by sisters. Very well. Come out with more clarification, more questions and so on. I will be very, very happy to answer to you. So over to you for any interaction, any questions, any clarification, any doubts. Or if you ask me, we, I think there is time. If you have any particular area which you need uh, more clarification, I will do it. Thank you very much. Sister Shiji. It is said, the key to life is accepting changes. Yes, Father Sunny, your session has moved us to understand the importance of accepting changes that come our way. Your session tells us that being challenged in life is inevitable, but being defeated is optional. Thank you so much, Father Sunny, for the thought-provoking session which has taken us to ponder on various aspects of education today and its challenges. All that you spoke focused on the importance of 
embracing holistic education. In it comes the urgent need to change our approach to education. The paradigm shift you proposed are indeed points worth pondering. Thank you so much for the rich insights. I'm sure in this floor, there are so many who are ready with the questions. So now the floor is open for interaction, questions or clarification. May I invite the sisters and the teachers present here for the interaction. Yes, anyone, anyone who wishes to raise a question, please unmute and speak. Or any area also, okay? Any area of educational doubts also I can tell you, which I have not dealt with many of these things, okay? Yes, please, anybody? You have written any questions here? Appreciation. Questions? You can type it also here, okay? If those who cannot ask questions, you can type it here. No problem. I will take it up and uh, briefly I'll explain. Mother, the, I just have one question. Yes. Father, the challenges that you placed before us are enormous. So when we think of the Indian context, especially, uh, we feel it is beyond the reach. So having had the chance of understanding it uh, because you were dealing with the evaluation and studies on way at various forums. So how would you uh, say, how can we respond to it? I mean, in a practical way, in this present time, how can we begin changing? Yeah, well, that's a very good question. That's a very good question. See, challenges are enormous, you know. Challenges were there earlier, but these, they, these days the challenges are much more uh, you know, focused uh, against, especially on us, you know. That is why you need to have that grip. I don't want to mention everything there. But I can tell you that the coming days are going to be more challenging. In the sense, for example, you look at the NEP, National Education Policy, and governments after governments are coming and saying that we will do it. Because, you know, if they don't do, state governments do not do, then the state, central government will not provide money. So the state government has to say, yes, we will do, without understanding the implication of it. Now, I'll give you one example. One example for all the sisters. I hope many sisters are here, no? Yes, Father. Yeah. Many are here. Yeah. Do you remember this? One aspect of the NEP called the school complex system. The school complex system means one school in an area which has infrastructurally better position, like laboratories, la laboratories and libraries, playgrounds and classrooms, and all the human resources also. Such a school will be the center of many other schools operating in that area. They will all tied up to this school, and they will all these smaller schools run by different organizations, whether it is public or government, will utilize the facilities of this one school. Both human resources as well as infrastructural resources. Now imagine the challenge is going to be faced by that because many of our schools, the Christian missionary schools, you look at whether it is in Northeast, in Guwahati, or I have seen your school in St. Teresa school there and so on. And many of your schools have, our schools have better facilities. Now there are surrounding that area, you will see many schools without having all these facilities. Now, government says both public and private schools will be assessed the same way and operated the same way. That means this government schools will be tied up to the private school. If you look at the chapter 7 of the education policy, where paragraph number 10 says, at least one private school will have one tied up with or twinned up with the one government school. Now, you see, sisters, it's all going to be a huge challenge for us in the coming days. Now, I don't want to explicitly again to mention now because that is not the forum, but you understand what I mean. Now, 
what are what are we doing how do you face the challenge is there a unity among us is there a unity among us for example north is such a powerful schools are there all all over the church is there and other organizations that are there are we in, in talk with each other are we connected with each other how strong are we networking in the national level cbci for example what is our priorities all these things are the challenges i think the only way to face the challenges is coming together discussing together deliberating together as you do today and that forums have to be more and more strengthened coming days uh, otherwise you look at the government what do they do i don't know whether you have cbsc schools anywhere uh, you are running cbsc schools yeah. you look at cbsc the whole cbsc is pressurizing the schools to implement nep one after another they are putting so much of pressure and uh, there is no resistance from us or no clarity from us nothing is happening no network is properly done among us i think that is the biggest point we need to look into immediately how to come together how to share forget about the little egos forget about that petty kingdoms of ours you know petty kingdoms i say our school your school latin no there is no msmhs or there is no diocese no no jesuits no uh, salation we all need to work together time has come for us to work together and face the challenges together don't leave it to one school to face the whole challenge or one group to change challenge we need to stand together i think that is where you people in the northeast and churches together northeast and forums are there i know social forum is there education forum may be there father amal is in charge of that one we need to strengthen that regional groups etc and then once the regional groups are strengthened the national groups will be strengthened then our voice will have a better recently before just uh, one more point uh, sister shiji before i left uh, uh, to ireland the some of the lay people like ac michael dr michael williams and so on they came together and they invited me to uh, go and bhavan goa bhavan for a small farewell in the evening and dr michael williams is a prominent educationist and a media personnel and a very good uh, scholar so he told me father maybe this is the form which we came together a few lay people and the two three fathers then he said this may be the beginning we need to bring together forget about petty issues and be larger level national coalition must be developed and i said that is the very and then they said maybe father you are the one at least because of you we came together and we want to make it i think go ahead with that kind of a thinking in order to face the coming challenges we need to stand together sister shiji that's the only way and the other how to face i'm sorry that is the nuances later but are we together that's the first thing thank you so much father good evening father good evening father yes yes uh, thank Please you tell. so much for sharing your i am sister stella is speaking uh, thank you for sharing your vast knowledge about the education a lot of things you spoke it is really um, enriching for all of us as we are running the schools and uh, on challenges of indian education today you spoke about one point vocational mm -hmm. courses enable our schools to cultivate it agricultural level and what are the christian schools that uh, should be a model that is correct but uh, some of the places what we experience is that we had uh, um, land to cultivate and we have asked the students to cultivate and uh, produce some products and uh, we have made effort but uh, some of the schools uh, found fault with the the school and some fathers they have done some kind of vocational training means the father was doing some uh, building up some work the students so father is doing the work they went to take uh, they were carrying the bricks to do the thing some of the parents took the photos and uh, they published in the press and it was a big issue and they have asked Uh, what are you doing with the students they are coming for studies not this type of work this type of things when it comes the schools uh, lag behind to uh -huh. encourage the students to do any type of this type of vocational yeah yeah I, i i i got your point you see you know that is why i said there are two three things there one is uh, people are not aware of what exactly is a vocational course or what kind of a course it is they don't understand that 
because we have not taught them anything. We have taught only the education means come to the school, mug up things and produce. This is what our problem. And therefore, we are creating an education which is completely alienating from the life of people. Okay, that's a, that's a real issue. Now, how do you tackle that one? First of all, every school should have a equally good programs for the parents also to teach them about this. That's one area. Second area is there is a, an animosity against anything what you do. Missionary schools nowadays, today. So you have to be aware of that. There are organizations who can find fault with us, whatever we do. So therefore, you need to have a proper mechanism. Now you have one advantage in the NEP, National Education Policy, which is going to be, which says vocational education must be part of our school system. Now, that is a very good clue. And that has to be taught to the parents also and make them aware. Now, agriculture, I gave an example is here in this school where I am. See, you can see here, it's a beautiful place here uh, in this school. This is uh, my area, school area. In this <coughs> one area is allotted for agriculture research, not simply cultivating so much of work. They're doing the research. What sort of if a soil is suitable? So they bring different soils. And uh, what type of a manure is supposed to be do, doing and so on and so forth. I saw the uh, every day people are coming, some students, even in this period, holiday nowadays, yeah, every day morning they come and they do some work, yeah, a little area only, but they do research on that. So we don't have such a system. I think we need to encourage our children to enter into with the support of the parents and organizations. Otherwise, you alone do something, that will be a problem. People can look at, uh, uh, as you mentioned the example, it can be counterproductive. Because our concept is, students means only go to the school, study. Study means what? Mug up the things. They're not thinking beyond that limitation. Yes. There is a question before others ask, you can write. The huh? uh, question is this. Father, we are in the area where many of our students have no smartphones. Can you give us some ideas how to tackle this problem during this COVID time? It is a huge issue. I told you, 70% uh, Niti Ayog, it's not I am saying. Niti Ayog's report has come out with 70% of Indian children are not getting online classes during this lockdown period. It's a big challenge for us. You know, in uh, Bihar, you must have read, not Bihar, in Charkhand, there is a place called Chatra or something. That place uh, last year, 2020, by the end of March, April, May and so on, one teacher found out that their children are not getting the smartphones. Even if there is smartphone, there is a huge digital divide. They don't have electricity. Or parents do not have uh, two, three gadgets for two, three children. Parents may not have been able to recharge the mobile network, etc. So the difficulties are plenty. So what the Jharkhand, Jharkhand, the poor man, you know, the teachers did, the headmaster did, he arranged a mic set, you know, mic set. In the village, we say the temple sounds when they put music and so on. So like that, mic set they brought and put up mic set uh, in the village, whole village on the electrical poles. And nine o'clock, he teaches nine o'clock to 9.40, there is one class. 9.40 to 10.30, another teacher giving class. So if the children accordingly watch. This is a, I say that is a very innovative man because he is, he is not disappointed with the lack of facilities. He made use of creatively what is possible. Now in your schools, in your area, you think what is best for. In my schools, you know, some of our village schools and so on, teachers were going with the notebooks to each child's house. One, two teachers were employed in this area, another area like that. They used to go and give them, get the things done and come back and so on and so forth. So there are alternative ways and means you have to bring. Suppose there is no, no red zone in your area, then you can ask the children, at least five children, 10 children to come in a particular area to have some kind of a class or giving the notes and so on by the teachers and so on. Creative ways of facing the problems is the one which we need to look up to. I cannot exactly say what we'll do in this period in your area, but think of what is possible in spite of the difficulties we face with. That's called creativity. Creativity. 
Thank you, Father. Any more questions? I have a question, Father. Yes, please. Hello. Yeah, Father, you spoke of accessibility. Uh, today we say uh, we see that some of our students who prefer to have free education leave our schools, though yes. we provide quality education. Yeah. Now you have said government schools have free education but no quality. Yes. Now how can we convince our parents, especially those who are poor? Yes. Yeah, that's a huge problem, sister, because parents are uh, also, you should understand their difficulties. They are worried about their daily living, isn't it? Second, after that only, education comes. You know, this Abraham Marcelo, the famous thinker, he said hierarchy of needs, you know, five needs are there. The first need, he says, is air, water, food. Without that, we cannot live. So the poor, the word you use to poor itself is that they don't have enough to survive. So therefore, they will not look at the primary concern is better quality education, not at all. They need to fulfill the primary needs first. And that is where government must play a big role. You look at uh, the state of Kerala. State of Kerala, right now, the last, I'm not favoring a particular government or anything, I'm just telling you, last uh, five to six years, if you look at the changes that are happening in Kerala, is very high in terms of government schools. Government schools. Government schools have intervened and given the better education to people, better facilities to people. And therefore, the poor or rich, they will all get better. That's why from private schools, people are going towards the government school in Kerala for a quality education. Huh? So they say this year itself, they have around 20 lakhs people or something, 6 lakh or 7 lakh people have added to the government schools this year. Now, in, in our areas, in North India and the Northeastern area and so on, the contrary, the other way. Poor people are joining government school and they lost the quality education there also. So it's a huge challenge. How do we do that one? That's why I'm saying, unless government is a major player, they give aid, they need help, they need to give a scholarship and so on. Otherwise, uh, this, div di this division will continue. This division will continue. That's why we need welfare mode of governments. Whether it's in Assam or whether it's in Meghalaya, there should be welfare mode of government. Now, right now, looking at the governments, and I can tell you that governments are not welfare. They are looking at the private agencies to uh, play a big role. They are giving to the private agencies. And private agencies will play in the cities only. They will not come to the rural areas. Ultimately, the rural people, the poor people will be deprived of. This is the situation. And that is why we need to choose the right governments and so on. Not simply any rhetoric is accepted, but look at their actions on the ground. I think uh, uh, this division will continue and more and more people will leave. In fact, you know, sister, if Hindi may bolne say na, this is a chal, this is a plot. What is a plot? You give everything free to the children in the government schools. That is, you get a red card, you'll get a cycle, you'll get a kanyadan, you'll get a ladki longeli, a special hai, and a ladka, everything they give. Books will be free, cycle will be free, red card will be there. Midday meal will be there, children will go, but there is no class, no education. And more and more people are attracted to that because of their poverty and their level of understanding. Ultimately, the class which are always the rural belt and poor people, marginalized class will continue to be marginalized. And that is where our concern must be. And we need to think of ways and means to alter this situation by putting advocacy and pressure on the government on one side, at the same time looking for ways and means to help our people. Both has to go together. Thank you. Thank you, Thank Father. You, Father, could you explain how to access alternative education in rural areas where facilities are deprived? Yeah. See, this is where we need to look for. For example, I see uh, before we all came to Arunachal and so on, people were so illiterate. No? 
Now, Arun, Arunachal, nowadays, uh, every missionary group, including yours, I know, we are all working there. And wonderful facilities we are giving. But when that facility, that school's facility, when you compare with outside, like uh, Delhi or in uh, Guwahati and so on, it may not be there. So we need to reach out to the rural areas as best as possible and give them according to their standard and improve them. And we are doing it. Christian missionary schools are long way we have done, uh, gone this way, reaching out to the people. We need to get more and more uh, alternative education to reach out to the people, build up facilities, connect with the schools. If you can start one good school area and uh, what you call feeder schools in the uh, local area and so on and so forth, we need to improve. And also, get access to the governmental measures. There are plenty of scholarship for minorities, tribals, the weaker sections, etc. All those things have to be tapped and helped our people. That is why we need sisters and fathers must be capable of dealing with the governments at one level also. We are not uh, tapping any of the resources. Somehow we, we only think about ourselves, ourselves and we do something. And uh, sometimes we are successful, sometimes we fail. But we need to enter into that level also. In our mission, I think a new way of thinking is that tap the governmental facilities for our children. So for that one, you need a better network. Any other? Please excuse me for... Okay, I just like to ask you a question. Like, since we're in a post situation now, as in a pandemic situation, and very soon the government will ask us to open the school. So, I just like to ask you a question What are the possible post COVID school reopening issues that the children would face? Oh, yeah. And yeah, that's as a, a teacher, and as a teacher, how to deal with such issues, especially that of interpersonal relationships? Yes. Because Very the children much. are away from the school for more, more than yeah, two yeah, yeah. years. Most I of got time it. They are facing the teachers visually. Thank you, Father. I got it. I got it. See, post corona schooling is not going to be the past corona period. Okay. Please remember that. Post corona period is a huge challenge for us. Because two years or more, children are not coming to the schools. They have lost the grip of schooling, number one. Number two, staying at home in the, in the quarantine, what do you call this lockdown period, etc., is has affected them so much in terms of their peer group is not there. They have not been able to go out freely. Their growth pattern has been affected. Many of them have been affected by anxiety, worries, and depression. All these things are there. And there is also fear. So much of fear among the children, among the parents. What will happen? You suppose a school a child comes to your school after reopening and return back with a little fever, you'll see the problem for the school. The parents themselves will say, it's because of the school, everybody is coming and they're all clear. So there is problem, both psychological and sociological and also of fear conscious. This is a phobia about the corona. So you are going to have more difficulties in terms of that those days. But a wise decisions can make all these things have been said. You have to put a very strict pattern of coming to the school, getting out of the school. Don't go with the old model. Suppose a child is sick, today comes and then you have exam. Don't worry about all those things. If uh, you have to be very, very flexible. And as soon as you come, don't start teaching subjects and so on. Make a lot of interactive ways, group work, sending to the children to different works, to, to, to give uh, constantly remind through the assemblies, etc., about the COVID-19. And we will overcome this. Hopefulness must be created. Don't create fear. Tell the children to analyze the news items. Don't go for too much of news and so on. For your information, sister, I have put up uh, some videos in my YouTube. You can check on these post-corona classes, etc. I have given videos. You can simply click on one subscribe free for everybody. There is also online classes. There is about post-corona classes. There are all these things are in the YouTube. 
um, many measures I've mentioned. If you like to subscribe it, just go to Google, YouTube, you know, you write Sunny Jacob SJ YouTube channel. Then you will get hundreds okay, of talks yes. there. Okay, you click on this. But what I am saying is post-corona school is you need to be flexible. You need not go with the earlier that strictness like that. Slowly, slowly you have to take the children the normalcy. Very first day onwards, you start to win the war. First week, it will not be enough for the children to enter, enter into the right mode. And secondly, you also have to be, school must be pay attention to proper sanitization and so on. And strictness has to be there. Physical distancing must be maintained. Toilet is the place where you need to be very much conscious, um, conscious of. Because that is where children go together and um, to, together and entry, entry and so on must be very much restricted. And uh, one by one people should go. And so on and so forth. That kind of a, uh, you have to play a big role there. School should be. So post-corona schooling is, again, about education as a whole, let me tell you. Post-corona schooling, I call it is a blended model of learning will happen. A blended model of learning. It's not only classroom teaching going to be. You need to have online classes. You need to have homeschooling. Homeschooling is a new concept. With parents should be part of the teaching and learning method. All these things have to happen. So there is a lot of things to be reworking. And uh, you can get some of these things I have put up in my YouTube. Please subscribe it and join it. And you will get it uh, uh, more on that. Challenges are plenty, sisters. Challenges are plenty. But every challenge is an opportunity for a wise person. We must make a opportunity out of these challenges. Thank you. For the one more question. Yes. How do you envisage the changes that can come about with the introduction of this NEP? Yes. NEP, I see that uh, in practical purpose, if you look at the pedagogy, andragogy, hutagogy, it means the method of teaching and child centeredness, etc., is fantastic. For example, the key principles of the education policy. And uh, developing 21st century skills, I agree that 100%. For example, the key principles talks about uh, education policy must be focusing on diversity and local context. Is there any objection to that? Diversity and local context. We must look at that. There is no problem. Second, it talks about uh, equity and inclusiveness. Equity and inclusiveness. Equity means equal opportunity for all, irrespective of caste, religion, caste, gender. Everybody should get opportunity. Inclusiveness means whether it is uh, uh, differently able to children also should be part of. You know, Sister CG, before I came to you, I went to that Montfort school. You remember that Tura, there is a yes. Montfort school. They, yes. are, they are actually best example on uh, inclusive education. Okay? We are supposed to be like that. Third, is uh, we are supposed to be looking at the community participation. People should participate in the school's affairs, not in the interference, but philanthropic groups must help us. That is the policy talks about. Fourth point, technology-based education must be given. That I already told you now. Fifth point is saying about conceptual-based education, not rote learning. Sixth point is uni uniqueness of every child must be accepted. That I told you, multiple intelligence. Number seven, it talks about critical thinking and creativity must be, must be there in the education. And eight point, it talks about a continuous assessment system has to be brought in. Now, eight key principles are fantastic. Now, what am I visualizing, Sister Ashiji, in the future? Future is this, that this policy is in terms of pedagogy and curriculum fantastic. But in administration, it is going to be a very, very big challenge for us. Because given the political climate and the governmental policies, I feel that more and more difficulties are going to arise in terms of administration. Coming days. Now that was I was in when I was in Delhi in, in Delhi, India, I was used to I used to uh, 
people tell people all church i used to say at that time 6 years 7 years 8 years i have been working on that but now i see the nep is going to be implemented in in a quite larger way and many of our schools will have tough times added to that one you know that ncpcr and so on just now suggested that minority rights should be eliminated minority rights should not be given and so on that is all going to be more and more challenges but remember all these what they are talking is also within the framework of the ideology of this particular party and particular government and therefore uh, we that's why i said we need to be more networking more uh, sharing of our resources more sharing of our ideas and uh, uh, challenges with one another and stand together to face the problems thank you for it anyone else from the floor okay kusum if no questions let me tell you to just two points one is uh, the, the the current uh, dispensation in india governments and so on are vehemently going with nep implementation no and the nep if you look at uh, better governance chapter 5 uh, please read the chapter 5 and chapter 7 of the nep especially chapter 7 which talks about the governance and uh, effective effective governance and so on which talks about the elimination of uh, the this different uh, categories of schools like minorities and so on it talks about only public and private schools okay and if that is what they are going to do i am sure that uh, we need to be cautious and we need to resist the difficulties which we are going to face because the even in uh, meghalaya when you look at uh, the the deo what do you call a educational officer deo district level sister cg district level education officer or block level education officers are there no yeah dseo dseo also so they are all if you look at they are yes. all political CEO. Ah, whatever officers, they are all political appointee. Political appointee. So therefore, they will serve their masters. This is what going to be. Uh, therefore, more and more interference you must face. More and more interference. More and more scrutiny. More and more uh, paperwork, and more and more uh, what we call uh, uh, checking and so on will be. done in our schools in the coming days i feel that is where we need to be aware and we need to educate ourselves also to face this these kinds of challenges with the proper governance from our part also yes one question is there sister shiji dear father my question is related to the point of money is everything because i am post graduate with d l e l and now i want to take admission in b ed but i cannot afford with my salary so what do you think about it yeah see one thing i let me tell you so far who, whatever degrees were allowed uh, is ended there now onwards anybody who do you know the nep says the minimum qualification for teaching is going to be four year integrated b ed four year b ed two year b ed and one year b ed will be there but four year b ed will be the common thing and therefore ttc i don't know other degrees earlier whatever they have given for like montessori course and so on will not be accept, accepted anymore according to the nep so this is for example i want to take admission for b ed you want to take admission for b ed you look for b ed where government colleges government gives freely free education or uh, with less money you can educate or you have to go for a correspondence course be it i know there are correspondence courses from calcutta there is a approved university is running beard courses with uh, less amount of money you can write the exam and get a certificate degree certificate immediately and there is one university in kerala 
called Sri Narayana Guru Open University in Kerala, which was very, very less amount they are taking. And you can join that university. Sister Shiji, you can tell that the, about them. I mean, about that one called Sri Narayana Guru University. It is based in Kollam. It's a new university, open university, which is one of the best in the country today. Okay. So you look for such things. You will get uh, uh, opportunities for completing your beard without having much of spending. I think uh, there is no more queries or interactions. I so we know. have come to an end. So I now call upon Sister Shali Jost to propose the word of thanks. Sister Shali Jost from Kanikulam, Kerala. She's the new headmistress of Archangel School. Oh, Sister Kanikula. Shali. Yes. You went to Kerala. <laughs> yes, Father. I am. Thank you. Thank you. Dear Father, we are grateful for the time and effort you took to share your thoughts and knowledge on challenges of education in India. Your presentation draws all the participants in and held our attention for two full hours. Every word contained lots of information and wisdom. I'm sure the session which you have delivered infused everyone with a new seal to address the challenges in our own respective areas and maintain balanced education system worldwide. As you have rightly mentioned, children are intellectually superior, emotionally immature, and challenged us to be critical thinkers and creating competency and innovative skills in children. Thank you very much, Father, for this wonderful and inspiring and awakening session. I want to express my sincere appreciation for Sister Shiji James, Counselor for Education, for your advanced planning, which made the webinar wonderful and successful. Thank you, dear Sister Shiji. We have benefited much. Thank you, everyone, once again who are present here. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you, Sister. Thank you, Sister Shali. And we have come to the end of this two-day program. I just um, inspired to say one thought. Martin Luther King once said, our survival depends on our ability to stay awake, to adjust to new ideas, to remain vigilant and to face the challenges, the challenge of change. Dear friends, when we look at a day which brought us extreme satisfaction, we see that it was not the day we went around doing nothing, but it was indeed a day when we did all that we were called to do. Let's understand the need to move into action and do all that we can. And that's what we have listened to yesterday and today. It's so important that we move into action and take to ourselves the responsibilities and carry it on. I thank sincerely Sister Catherine Joseph, General Counselor for Education for her encouraging presence for this program. Thank you, dear sister. Sincere thanks to Sister Lisa Chetri, our provincial, for being there all through the days of the program. We appreciate your interest and care. Also, Sister Eskosia Navas, the Vice Provincial, for the time spent with us during these days and making her presence felt. Thank you, dear sister. I thank all the principals, managers,
I think you got cut. So Shriji got cut. Over. I, the computer connection is gone, so I'm just... No, it came, came. You are there. Okay. Over, then we can exit now. Sister Shiji, thank you very much. I am leaving. Thank you. See you again. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank, Thank you, dear sisters. Thank you very much. Thank you, Father. Thank, Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Well, welcome to Ireland.